Uh, now I will uh, require, uh, ask uh, our third speaker, Maulana Farhan Iqbal Sahib, our missionary in Peace Village, and the topic on which he will speak is the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu on his Messiah. Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salatu wasalam proclaims Mujhe us khuda ki qasam hai jis ne mujhe bheja hai aur jis par iftara karna lanatiyon ka kaam hai ke us ne masih maud bana kar mujhe bheja hai I swear by God who has sent me and to attribute imposture to whom is to be accursed that he has sent me as the promised Messiah. These are the words in which Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad made his grand claim. This is not an ordinary statement. Instead, this is an incredible statement made in an extraordinary time. And it had to be so. It had to be so. According to the statements of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the time for the coming of the Messiah was to be a great event in the history of Islam. Such an event when the Muslims were to witness again an image, an imitation of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. It was to be a time of the rejuvenation of Islam due to the greatness of this unique event in the history of Islam. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ensured that he gives us all the necessary details for us to recognize and believe in the right Messiah. The signs for the Messiah are such that no human beings or even groups of human beings working together for generations could create by themselves. And, it, and so it is very easy to know if someone lays a false claim to be the Messiah. The fact of the matter is that when a person looks at all the signs, when a person looks at all the prophecies for the coming of the Messiah, he, he will come to one and only one conclusion, that all the signs for the coming of the Messiah and Mahdi have been fulfilled. And that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed wasalam, is indeed that Messiah foretold by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so, Acceptance of this Messiah is absolutely cru crucial. As the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, When you see him, pledge, alle uh, pledge allegiance to him or do his bath, even if you have to crawl over ice to get to him, because he is the Khalifa of Allah, the Mahdi. Similarly, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, Yushaku man asha minkum an yalqa Isa ibn Maryama imamam mahdiyan hakaman adla. Whosoever amongst you lives will see the time of the Messiah, Jesus son of Mary, who will be the Imam Mahdi, the arbiter and the judge. In other words, the Mahdi and the Messiah will be one and the same person. And he will be the arbiter, he will be the judge of all matters of disagreement among the Muslims. What is more is that the Holy Prophet وسلم, said, Fal yukrehu minni, minni salama. Deliver my salam to him, convey my salutations to him. All these narrations, all these ahadis show us the grandeur of the status of the Messiah and Mahdi in the eyes of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he viewed the great status of the Messiah and Mahdi. 
He gives us emphatic instructions to do his bad, to go to him, to see him, to deliver his salam to him, to consider his word as the final word. These are not ordinary statements, not ordinary statements for an ordinary Messiah. This is, this is, these are statements, these are statements for a person holding an outstanding status in the eyes of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The prophecies concerning the Messiah are such that they can be divided into three parts. Number one, prophecies telling us the time of the coming of the Messiah and Mahdi. Number two, prophecies telling us the location of the appearance of the Messiah and Mahdi. And number three, prophecies telling us uh, prophecies that contain the signs that will be manifested at the time of the coming of the Messiah and Mahdi. Regarding the time of the appearance of the Messiah and Mahdi, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, the, the statements of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very clearly indicate that his coming will be in the 13th and 14th centuries of Islam, which is equivalent to 19th century AD. For instance, Hazrat Abu Qatada anhu, narrates that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al ayatu badal mayatain. The signs of the coming of the Imam Mahdi will be manifested after 200 years. A great elder and scholar of Islam, Hazrat Mullah Ali Qari, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in commentary of this hadith, he has written, Wa yuhtamalu an yakuna lamu fil mayataini lil ahdi. That is, the Alif Lam in the word Al Mayatain possibly refers to 200 years after the passing of 1000 years when the, 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 the signs for the Messiah will appear. And that is a time of the coming, of the advent of the, of the Imam Mahdi. In other words, he's saying that the time for the coming of the Imam Mahdi is after 1200 Hijra. This statement, along with statements of many other scholars, Buzurgan, elders of Islam, such as Hazrat Nemutullah Shah Waliullah Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Hazrat Imam Ibn Arabi Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and Hazrat Shah Waliullah Muhaddas Delavi Rahimahullah Ta'ala, all of them, all of their statements clearly indicate that the time for the coming of the Messiah and Mahdi is the end of the 13th century and the beginning of the 14th century of Islam, which is equivalent to 19th century AD. What is more is that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Iza mazat mayatani wa arbauna sanatan yabasullahu al-mahdi. When 1240 years will pass, that is the time when Allah Ta'ala will send the Imam Mahdi. As a result, Precisely in accordance with these prophecies, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salatu was born in 1250 Hijra or 1835 AD and began receiving revelations from God in 1290 Hijra, which is the time of the end of the 13th century and the beginning of the 14th century of Islam. The promised Messiah alayhi salam says, He says, why do you wonder at my coming as a Messiah? The environment of the time demands that a Messiah comes. He says, it is a time for the coming of a Messiah, not anyone else's. Had I not appeared, someone else would have appeared. He also says, Jab sadi ka hua, aur sadi ka zuhur honne laga, to khuda ta'ala ne ilham ke zariye se mujhe khabar di, ke tu is sadi ka mujadid hai. That is, when the 13th century was coming to an end and the 14th century was about to begin, God Almighty informed me by revelation 
that you are the reformer of this century, other than specifying the time of the appearance of the Mahdi and the Messiah, the Holy Prophet وسلم, also told us a location for the appearance of the Imam Mahdi. When he said that he will descend in the Manarat al Baydai Sharqiyya Dimashq, towards the east of Damascus, next to a white minaret. Specifying even further, he said, Isabatun Tagzul Hinda Wahiya Takunu. That a group or community will appear in India and they will do jihad and they will be with the Imam Mahdi whose name will be Ahmad. Specifying even further, he said that the Imam Mahdi will appear in a town called Kada'a. When we look at all these statements as a whole, we can clearly see that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is the one who came in fulfillment of all these prophecies. He appeared in India, in a town called Kadian, which is a distorted form of the word Kada. And Kadian lies directly towards the east of Damas Damascus. All these are vivid examples of fulfillment of the prophecies of the Holy Prophet وسلم, regarding the location of the advent of the Messiah and Mahdi. And only someone who does not wish to see can reject such clear signs. It is because of the fulfillment of all these signs and because of divine revelation, the promised Messiah alayhi salam, declared, I swear by God who has sent me and to attribute imposture to whom is to be accursed that he has sent me as a promised Messiah. As I believe in the verses of the Holy Quran, so do I believe without the difference of a particle in that clear divine revelation which has been vouchsafed to me and the truth of which has been established by his successive signs. He says, I can stand in the Baitullah and swear that the holy revelation which descends upon me is the word of the same God who sent his word to Moses, to Jesus, and to Muhammad, the chosen one, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He says, says that the earth bore witness in my support and so did the heaven. In this way, the heaven and the earth have affirmed that I am the vice student of Allah. What is more is that to help us identify the right Messiah, the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did not just stop here. He also told us what kind of man that Messiah will be. For instance, he said that the hair of his head would be straight, that he would have a wheatish complexion that he would belong to a family of farmers, that while talking, he would occasionally strike his hand against his thigh, that he would suffer from a slight stammer in his speech, that he would get married, that he would have children, that he would wish to distribute the wealth of knowledge, but no one will be willing to take it from him, that he will be the imamukum minkum, imam of the Muslims from among the Muslims that he would suffer from two diseases, one in the upper part of the body and one in the lower part of the body. And so it has all turned out. Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad wasalam, suffered from two diseases, vertigo and diabetes. He had straight hair. He suffered from a slight stammer in his speech. He would occasionally strike his hand against his thigh while, while speaking. He belonged to a family of farmers. Who can deny? Who can reject these signs? It can only be those who themselves wish to turn a blind eye to these signs that are as bright as the sun. Warning such people. Warning such people, the promised Messiah salam, says that these people who keep on rejecting his signs, he says, Agar Muslim is waqt mujhe kabool na kare, 
تو آئندہ ان کی ایمانی حالت کے لیے سخت اندیشہ ہے کیونکہ میرے انکار سے نتیجہ آخر یہ ہوگا کہ اس پیشگوئی کو ہی ایک جھوٹی پیشگوئی قرار دے دیں گے اور ناؤز باللہ آن حضرت صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو دروگ گو سمجھ لیں گے That is, if Muslims do not accept me at this time, then there is a present danger for the future of their spiritual condition that due to rejecting me, the eventual result will be that they will consider this prophecy to be a false prophecy and God forbid, they will accuse the Holy Prophet وسلم, of uttering falsehood. Going further, there are many narrations that tell us about the state of the world when the Messiah and the Mahdi will come. For instance, according to the statements of the Holy Prophet وسلم, the Messiah was to come in a world where camels would be abandoned due to the appearance of new forms of transport. It was to be a world where new news would be carried instantaneously from one part of the world to the other. It was to be a world where Christian nations would be supreme a world where Arabia was to become a separate state, a separate governments were to form in Iraq, Syria, and Egypt, a world where gambling was to increase, a world where women were to dress like men, the rich would not give charity to the poor, a world where nothing would remain of Islam except its name, a world where mosques would be full of people but devoid of guidance. All these signs, all these narrations, and many others clearly demonstrate that this is the age when the Messiah and the Mahdi was to appear. On top of all these prophecies, there is one magnificent prophecy that leaves no doubt that the promised Messiah and Imam Mahdi والسلام, has indeed arrived. The Holy Prophet وسلم, says, Inna li Mahdina ayataini lam takuna munzu khalqis samawati wal ard. Meaning, there are two signs for the truthfulness of our Mahdi, which have not manifested for anyone since the creation of the heavens and the earth. That is, during Ramadan, the moon will be eclipsed on the first of three possible nights for the eclipse of the, sun, of, of the moon, and the sun will be eclipsed on the second of three possible days for the eclipse of the sun. In other words, the Holy Prophet وسلم, said that the very heavens will bear testimony that the Messiah and Mahdi is here. Hence, this incredible sign occurred only a few years after Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad والسلام, made his claim as the Messiah. It was in the year 1894 when, during the month of Ramadan, the moon was eclipsed on the first of three possible nights in Ramadan that is the 13th, and the sun was eclipsed on the second of three possible days, and that is the 28th. The Promised Messiah alayhi salam says, Asma mere liye tune banaya ek gawa, chand aur suraj huye mere liye tari ko tar, yaro jo mard aane ko tha, wo to aa chuka, ye raas tumko shamso kamar bhi bata chuka. That is, O oh God, you made the heaven my witness and darkened the moon and the sun for me. Oh friends, the man who was expected to come has indeed come. You have been informed of this secret by the sun and the moon. He also says, <laughs> He also says, that is, hear the pronouncement of the heavens. It cries, the Messiah has come, the Messiah has come. And listen to the pronouncement of the earth. It says, the Imam who has been decreed to be successful is indeed here. My dear brothers and sisters, in this short discourse, I've only been given, able to give you a glimpse of the various prophecies of the Holy Prophet وسلم, regarding the Promised Messiah. They show us the advent of the Promised Messiah 
in the eyes of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, how he viewed the coming of the Messiah and Mahdi. There can be no doubt that when we look at all these prophecies, we see very clearly that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salatu wasalam is indeed that person who was prophesized to come by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And so there can be no doubt, there can be no doubt that the community that has been formed, that has been founded by the promised Messiah alayhi salam is actually founded, the seed for this community is actually placed by God Almighty himself. And there can be no doubt this, that, that this community will eventually prevail and that there can be no doubt that it will grow and there can be no doubt that it will flourish inshallah ta'ala. I end my speech today with this quotation of the promised Messiah alayhi salam in which he says, in which he declares, Though I am grateful to God Almighty for such good friends, yet it is a part of my faith that even if there remains not a single person with me and all of them go their way, leaving me alone, I would still have no fear. I know that God Almighty is with me. He says, Agar main pisa jaun aur kuchla jaun aur ek zarre se bhi hakir tar ho jaun aur har ek taraf se iza aur gali aur lanat dekhun tab bhi main akhir fata yaab hoon ga. Even if I am trampled underfoot and crushed and become less than a particle and experience persecution and abuse and curses from every direction, still I shall ultimately be victorious. No one knows me, but he is with me. I cannot be destroyed. Vain are the efforts of my enemies and useless are the designs of the envious ones. O oh, ye foolish and blind ones, was there ever a righteous one before me who was ruined so that I should be ruined? Was there ever a truly faithful one who was destroyed by God in humiliation so that he should destroy me? He says, Yakinan yaad rakho aur kaan khol kar suno ke meri roo halak hone wali roo nahi aur meri sarish mein nakami ka khameer nahi. Listen carefully and remember that my soul is not liable to destruction and that my nature is not prone to failure. He says, I have been bestowed such courage and veracity against which mountains are nothing. I am not afraid of anyone. I was alone and was not unhappy at being alone. Will God then desert me? Never. Will he, will he destroy me? Never. My enemies will be humiliated and those envious of me will be put to shame and God will bestow victory upon his servant in every field. I am with him and he is with me. Nothing can break our relationship. <laughs>